Actually, wait. Yeah, I don't know. No, no, wait. No, no. Bro, no. On, hold on. Dude. Wait. Hold on. I'm sorry. When has it ever been delayed before? You know, like delayed. Is that is that where we're putting it at? I feel like uh, a checks and balances worked. But hey, Desi, no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. Yeah. yeah. When has it ever been delayed before? So never. Right. When has it been delayed yeah. with violence? Never. So that's not a peaceful transfer of power. It was delayed with violence. That's not but a peaceful Are you power. telling me that Trump like got into their ears and said, hey, guys, gather around. We're going to attack the Capitol today. Do you have evidence to suggest that? Yeah. Why were they there? Because, okay, Desi. Why did they go all, to the Capitol on January 6th? Do you think that they are under President Trump's command to... Go attack the Capitol. Is that what you're Why were they there? Why were they there on January 6th? To riot. <laughs> okay, who told them to go there? What do you, what do you mean? No, who was so tweeting like, out, come to January 6th? Who was tweeting out, come here for a historic event? Who was tweeting out, come here to save our country? Hey, Desi, can, 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 I, can I build no, this No, no question. Come on, man. Well, listen, we, we, you, you got to yes, answer questions. Who yes, was sir. there? Yeah, no, yeah. I am. But, like, come on, guys. Like, you are afraid of stuff, so let me just say this. Did we not see from um, the BLM riots? BLM, don't care. Oh, who was there? Okay, who, who told them to go riot? Which lawmaker or which president said go riot and blow Wait. buildings? Did Donald Trump say tell them to go riot? He said fight like hell or you're going to lose your country. He called them for a historic event on January 6th to the Capitol. He said let's come here. And then he said we're going to march down to the Capitol. Where they rioted and they delayed the certification of the vote. Show me an equivalent action on the left. Yeah, definitely. BLM riots 2020. No, they're who? 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 Name no, BLM no, riots. Is that the first name or the last name? No, no. We can't who? Who? Name the leader. Name. Okay, yeah. What did Kamala say? What did Kamala say? Okay, so Kamala bailed out. No, nope, not the Minnesota bailout fund. No, no, no. I'm asking you specifically. I'm asking you specifically. What did Kamala say? A donating to a bail fund, if you want to say that that's bad, you automatically lose because Kamala tweeted no, one sir. time a link to a bail fund. Donald Trump, while somebody was getting assaulted at one of his rallies, said, hey, take care of that guy and I'll pay your legal fees. Okay? Kamala tweeted a link to a donation fund. Donald Trump said that he would cover the legal cost of a guy that assaulted someone in the audience. So if you want to go what? with that comparison, you've already yes, completely lost. What did Kamala say? Well, hey, Destiny, so like, can I, can I say this? Is that she conveniently tweeted out a bail fund while cities were burning? You're telling me no, no, that it, it was just- here's, here's, There's like 50 million ways these are not comparable. Uh, Number one, the president of the United States, which was Donald Trump at the time, has the highest level of civic responsibility. If you're somebody who cares about American values, you should understand with great power comes great responsibility. The president of the United States is more powerful than a United States senator. So even if I granted you the premise about Kamala Harris, which I don't, Donald Trump, what he did was objectively far worse because he's more powerful, he had more responsibility to behave himself. Number one. Number two, Kamala Harris did not summon people to Minneapolis or anywhere else. She did not encourage people to go there. She posted a link to an indigent bail fund that would go to anybody who needed bail, not just violent protesters, but people, no. anybody who was arrested. No, number two, that is a fact, okay? Number three, when Donald Trump did tell the rioters to stop rioting, they left. They clearly deferred to him. They were under his command. That's why they fucked off. Kamala Harris did not encourage anybody to riot. She condemned the violence, as did President Biden when he was running for office at the time. There is no comparability here. Number four, the violence in January 6th was an attempt by the sitting president to stop the peaceful transfer of power. There was nothing about that during the George Floyd protests. There was no attempt to stop the peaceful transfer of power. Number five, Donald Trump was successful in violating the peaceful transfer of power because there was violence at a day at a major link of the peaceful transfer of and power. And there was an obstruction. They delayed it. It was delayed. Yes. It was called off. They stopped certifying the vote for the first time, I think, in all of U.S. history. They Correct. stopped certifying number, the vote because of violence from domestic terrorists, not because we were in wartime, not because we were going to get attacked by a foreign country, but because the pres the ex-president, the current president of the United States was calling his fucking sycophantic fans to the Capitol to go riot. And number six, what did Congress do as a check against the president that day? True. You said that there was a check from Congress against a president. Can you well, no. So I say checks and balances work because there was a peaceful transfer eventually. I, I don't know. It, it could have been delayed, but I will eventually? say that. Yes, sir. So here's, here's where I think here's where I think you're you're confused or you're missing us or we're miscommunicating. But I, I think you're just confused when I say a check against. I, a criminal I, I'm president, definitely wait a minute. I'm definitely not when confused, I say sir. when I say a check against a criminal president. 
I think you think a check against a criminal president is, well, sure, a president might be able to commit a shit ton of crimes while they're in office. But as long as they eventually leave, violence or no violence, that's a check against a criminal president. That you're out of your goddamn mind. That is not a meaningful check. A check against a criminal president would be, hey, if a criminal president commits a crime, they will be criminally punished for that crime yeah, checks when they and leave office. And checks and balances are supposed to work before. It's a check and a balance, not like a consequence and a conviction. OK, we wouldn't say that that uh, that uh, that a. Uh, that the fucking death row is our checks and balances against like murders in society. Ideally, when it comes to government and functions of government, you want to be able to have the, the government like be able to kind of like control and guide like the other branches to some extent. Not like, holy shit, everything is fucking falling apart. The, the entire government is imploding. But the, at the very least, things kind of got along afterwards. That's insane. That's an insane standard to set. Yeah, yes, I, I just I'm st I'm uh, stunned by this. So I'm going to ask you again. What is a check against a criminal president after Trump v. United States? Hey, Josiah, I'm just going to have to disagree with the, uh, the premise on this. But hey, real quick, I appreciate y'all's conversation. I just really hope you guys don't think that like I'm um, um, a ne nefarious individual. I think I, you're I, a really nice guy, but I think I think this is unhinged. I, I think okay, sir. somebody who says and, that they yes, want, sir. that they value America and that they have American values, I am stunned that you're going to vote for a guy that embodies the antithesis to America, a guy who says, treat me like a king, not a public servant, a guy who says that he doesn't have to respect the results of free and fair elections because he's infallible. And if he loses, it must be because he's rigged uh, a, a guy who or the, the system is rigged, a guy who, you know, lies with impunity, a guy who. Uh, you know, cheerleads our foreign adversaries who constantly denigrates America. Like you love America. He constantly talks shit about America. He constantly says that this country is a third world country, that we're a country in decline. He just did an interview on the flagrant podcast and actually got pushback from the centristy comedians there when he's like, you know, we're not a great country. And they were like, no, 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 we're always a great country. See, that's where I disagree because apparently America is only great when he is in charge and you want to, you are either want to, or you are willing to reward all of that. That is insane. That's stunning. You say you're not conservative, but I suspect you might be. And an exercise that you should have in your head is, would I be okay if a Democrat did any of this? And if the answer is no, I would argue you have a moral obligation to be consistent. Obviously, I can't force that. You're free to be as hypocritical as possible. But to any MAGA Republican listening, before, when you're evaluating something Trump says or does, the first fucking thing you should do is, would I be okay if Obama said or did this? And the answer is no, then that means it's equally wrong when Trump does it. And if you disagree, you're a fucking unprincipled loser who should be made fun of relentlessly. Wow. Yeah. So, sorry about that. Um, do you want anybody else in? Or are you calling it? Yeah, if you got one more, fucking drag one more and fuck it. Yeah. Also, anybody? listen, I critique Pisco because sometimes... When I'm with Pisco, it feels like he's not holding him to the fire enough, okay? Now, I'm going to fight you on one thing, okay? Stop what? saying, I'll grant you this. Don't grant them anything. Don't grant them a single goddamn oh. thing. Because the things they say are so, You're, so... I understand. They're I understand. so wrong. They're so... Even the yeah. bail fund thing. So the fuck what? It's bail. A judge is the one who decides if you even fucking get it or not. Are we saying that, yeah. are, are you going to tell me that, that what, we're, are we all opposed to bail now? Should that just be like an abolish? Like even that, you don't, don't grant anything. Don't ever I grant, understand. don't I ever, understand. don't grant them. I, sometimes don't. I, I sometimes we don't do DEI here. My, we don't do my, DEI here. We don't do handouts, no equity. Sometimes okay? my naivete gets the better of me. And I think to myself, if I can just show that even if I grant them this, they still lose. They'll just accept defeat. Um, no, because right. all they'll take from that is... Look at this guy granted me. Yeah, you're No, right. it'll be like, okay, so I think that Kamala Harris encouraged BLM rioters, and um, I don't think that what Trump did was that bad. And you'll go, even if we grant that she encouraged the rioters, Trump's encouragement was way worse because he was the president. And they'll be like, okay, the next time they talk to me, they'll go, oh, yeah, I had a debate with Josiah. Um, even he agreed that Kamala, you know, encouraged BLM rioters. That's all they'll say. Mm -hmm. And then you're yeah. like, oh, well. They'd be lying. They'd be lying, but maybe they will say that. Okay, do we have... Any strident MAGA fan, the final boss of MAGA who wants to take on Destiny, Destiny who is, as far as MAGA is concerned, public enemy number one. True. Right? If you defeat Destiny, you've basically won the election. Think Jesus about this. Christ. Does anybody want to take on Destiny? Or Destiny. We have a hand raise. Okay. All right. If no hand raises, I'm just going to invite a random person in the queue. 
I'm telling you, this person right beside Pisco, the right girl, it says conservative, 31, Trump 2024, respect Kennedy, MAGA, Maha. Guess not. Okay, let's see. One other person. Let me look at some of these profiles. I'm trying to make an informed decision. Well, I'm looking. How you doing, buddy? Me? Yeah, how are you? <laughs> I'm surviving. How are you? And you've been MIA for a minute. Has it just been like uh, the J6 doc, or have you been traveling? Um, I think it was a combination of J6 stuff, plus traveling, plus... Um, Depression. No, not yet. We shot like um, we shot like six episodes. I think we did like three anything else and like four Bridges episodes like in like three days. Oh, and um, Rowan came for top secret recording stuff that we did here. Um, nice. And yeah, there's just a lot of... I had like a week packed with a ton of fucking shit. He's a nice guy. All right, I'm going to give Kombucha Sippa. He's got a Trump with dreads in his profile picture. So, man, please don't disappoint. Be a MAGA supporter who loves Trump. It is your time. Stop. What the fuck are you talking What's going on? He's just being a fucking terrorist right now. Who? I'm honey. not looking at your stream. Good. It's Honey, this cat. He just... Wow. Well, so much for kombucha. They left. All right, we're going to try one other person. What about... Um, somebody just popped up. Jessica. Jessica, which sadly is what my eighth grade yearbook called me. But thank God kids are not cruel. Jesus. Yeah. Jessica? Yeah. Hey, can you hear me? Yeah, what's up? You want to defend hey. Donald Trump and MAGA? Yes, uh, I want to make it clear that I am not voting for Donald Trump, but I see some things in him that I really wish Kamala... Kam Kamala? Am I saying it right? Yep. Kamala. Yep. Okay. We sh would show right now, right? So I guess I'm I'm um, advocating for Trump because I'm sort of making the case for why you shouldn't vote for Kamala. So um, you mentioned the, the bail fund and how that doesn't really matter. I think it does when you're running on being the top cop, you know, like that profile of being the toughest on crime. That's sort of a contradiction. How? I think, um, well, I think that uh, most law, law enforcement are not in favor of cash bail. What's wrong with it, it? Do we think that bail, hold on. What do we think bail is? Actually, I might not even fucking know what bail is. What, can you explain to me what you think bail is? And then I'll explain what I think of bail is, and then we'll. It's um, when you've been arrested, it is the money you give that says that you will return um uh -huh. to court while yeah. they let you out okay yeah yeah and then uh, and then a bail has to be granted by a judge correct mm -hmm. okay so so to be clear a judge could reject bail right you could post bail and a judge could say <laughs> no yeah and decline i mean this is the least of the points i wanted to make no, like, no don't do this where we bring a thing up and then it's not a great thing and then we say well i don't actually care about that hold on so i just want to be clear no I, I no no, no, no wait. I, okay yes because a lot of people bring this up okay and if you care so okay. bail in and of itself isn't necessarily a bad thing right if in fact can we both agree bail is probably totally fine in concept it's a good thing in concept do we agree with that or yes, no i do believe it is a good thing it's not that Bail is bad. I think okay. it's bad that she runs as this, you know, tough on crime, top cop, you know, candidate, and then also puts up a link to donate to this fund. Why, Do you know what, what I mean? No, I don't. What, does tough on crime mean that you have to like, like, let's say, for instance, you ran on tough on crime, a t being a tough on crime cop, but you also think that there should be like, uh, like an extra level of appeals for, um, for people that don't have uh, money for a, a criminal defender. Are those like, are those contradictory things? You're like, I think that people that have been charged with crimes should be afforded a public defender in order to file a second or third round of appeals. But we, and also we need to be tough on crime. Are these like contradictory positions? No, they're not contradictory. Okay. I think... The time when she uh, tweeted out that link to the bail fund is sort of important, too. Okay. I mean, it was during it. She, she condemned the riots, but she tweeted it out at a time when rioters were being arrested, right? And this was to we're only get wait, them wait, out wait, of jail. Wait, wait. Aren't you always tweeting at a bail fund when people are being arrested? When are you ever going to talk about a bail fund otherwise? Isn't it always when people are being arrested? 
this particular group of people. people there, were, weren't there lots of people that were being arrested? Weren't there, there protests yeah. all over the United yeah. States? Isn't that what we talk about yeah. a lot for some yes. of them? Okay. Yes. And, and I have no problem with that. I only have a problem with the emphasis she's put on how many people she put in jail, how tough she was on crime, and also doing that. But again, wouldn't the difference literally I think that she be has that? Lots of other... Sure, but wouldn't the difference literally be like I put people in jail who I thought belonged to be in jail, but I'll contribute to a bail fund because I think that people should have the right to post bail? Isn't there nothing contradictory whatsoever in those two positions? I still think there's a contradiction there. There's something odd there. Okay. I, do you think that? Then my final question. I'm sorry. Then just sorry. do you think that whatever a position might be on bail or whatever that. Donald Trump's pardoning of all of the people around him that were convicted of crimes. Do you think that that's worse when it comes to a position on crime? Yes, of course. He's a shithead. Okay. Yeah. But I also have a case for why, like, I just think that she's weak on several things. So that let's was put, the first thing. Right, right. Well, let's, let's, let's just stop right there. Let's, let's, okay. uh, I almost granted you, I almost granted you the premise and then Stephen will have an aneurysm. Well, uh, let's like say, but things, wait a minute, but I let's really, say, yeah. we'll, but just, we, we'll get to them, I, I promise. But my understanding okay. is that you came in here suggesting that you, even though you're not a big fan of Trump, that you don't think mm -hmm. that people should vote for Kamala. But even if she's weak I, on some... Wait, well, I don't know ahead. if she said that, to be clear. I think she just said wait, these yeah, are arguments she hears against Kamala and what things she wishes that Kamala would do that Trump doesn't do. Or things that she, yeah. she wishes Kamala would do. Oh, okay, well, okay. Does, yeah, so, so, so to, well, let, let me ask you this then, just to clarify then. Do you recognize uh, who do you prefer, Kamala or, or Trump? You can still make all Kamala. your other points, but I just want to make sure. Okay, okay, perfect. Yeah, Kamala. Okay, so you're not trying to create a false equivalence. No. no. Okay, perfect. Now I feel better. See, I was trigger happy. I'm sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. I think my my one case for Trump, the one thing besides him saying that LaGuardia is the shittiest airport in the U.S. I don't even saying, agree with that. I've like, been through much shittier airports than LaGuardia, but go ahead. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, he is way more definitive. And I know that sounds weird. Like he goes, he sort of follows the last person that advised him. But at least there's a direction. Like the number of things that uh, Kamala has gone back on since she ran for president is crazy. Um you know, she she uh, said she would eliminate private health care. She walked that back immediately because there is backlash. And of course, she, you know, mentioned Wait, that when, in when, the when, debates immediately. Wait a minute. Ref you might have to refresh my memory on this one. What do you mean immediately? Uh, in 2019, she did a town hall or something right. where she said she would eliminate private. And then there was immediate backlash and they wrote, a, you know, post on Medium within like a week. So, so this, so she did all of this in 2019. You're saying she she walked it back within a week of making the original claim back in 2019. Yes. Okay. All right. Sorry. Continue. Yes. Um, I think for climate change, she she uh, points out things that have already been passed, but I have no idea what she wants to do. I mean, I thought she supported electric vehicles and that mandate. Then she walked that back. She said she was against fracking. Uh, she went to Pennsylvania, and now she's cool with it. I mean, she was cool with it when she started, you know, running with Biden. But yeah, that that sort of flipped. Um, I don't know. There's there's other things too, like so that worries me that she's sort of going with whatever is popular in that moment, which is the thing that I associate most with Trump. He just does whatever will get him liked in that moment. And I think that she's sort of falling into that. But don't you didn't you say she's doing things you and you wish she would do things like Trump? I wish she would say what she wants to do and what she will do. But Trump I doesn't mean, do that, right? Because like you said, Trump's Trump's position on things really depends on the last person to whom he spoke, <laughs> right? OK, what, what I think will happen is total inaction. Like Trump would at least do something, even if it was shitty. I think that she is set up to not do anything. I think so, it'll be four years of here's where I'm done. here's where I'm confused by that. So obviously we're speculating because she's never been president, but she has yeah. been vice president. She's worked very closely with President Biden, second in command of the executive branch. The Biden administration, mm -hmm. the Biden Harris administration, has just gotten a lot more done than the Trump Pence administration, right? So if there was inaction. 
There's much more inaction from the Trump administration than the Biden-Harris administration. So why would you assume that there'd be an action from Harris, given that she's she is the you know co-captain of the team that had the most action compared to the other guy? I don't know how strongly she actually advocated. I know she talked to you know leaders in what Guatemala, Venezuela, to tell them to stop sending people. We had the most. So did we have the most people cross the border over the last four years? Yeah, I, um, I would say, yeah, it was record-breaking numbers uh, the first three years of the Biden-Harris administration. But again, her her um, job was to address root causes of migration mm -hmm. um, with ultimately the goal to stem the flow over time. And again, over the past five months, um, the, the rates of, of uh, undocumented crossings at the southern border have been basically cut in half. So, but my again, my point is, what would Trump do? Because we're comparing the two of them, and you say that Kamala does things that you wish Trump that she doesn't do things that you wish Trump would do. And I'm thinking, even on the action thing, she's been part mm -hmm. of a much more legislatively and executively successful and active administration than Trump was. So why would you want her to be like Trump when Trump was worse? I would like her to have the confidence of Trump. And I, I really don't know how many of those decisions are um, attributable to her. How okay, big of a part I, would she play? I'm only willing to do this because you said you were a, a Kamala supporter, okay? Otherwise, okay. fuck MAGA. So close your ears if you're MAGA, okay? I actually do kind of agree. I think it feels, even though I think you can make good arguments for a candidate who uh, changes their mind as the electorate changes their mind, I think you can make arguments for why that's fine that she you know, ran a lot more extreme than Biden, but then once the electorate decided, well, we want to support these policies, she changes her mind. I, actually, I do admire people like, for instance, Bernie Sanders, who've been campaigning and running and talking about the same fucking things for like 30 or 40 years. There is a level of genuinity mm -hmm. that comes from people that do that. I agree that's admirable. That being said, that trait is entirely absent in Donald Trump. I understand that Donald Trump talks yes. with a lot of force, but like right now, he's talking forcefully about how Republicans, um, you know, gave you the um, they gave you the ability to have um, pre-existing conditions in health care. And <laughs> Donald Trump spent the first few months of his administration trying to destroy that in Congress. And when he failed, he went to the Supreme yeah. Court to destroy that. So while Donald Trump might speak a little bit more forcefully on it, he's entirely hypocritical, right? Yeah. Well, maybe one other thing I can point out. Mm -hmm. um, everybody's. Uh, been upset that he will definitely appoint loyalists, people that just agree with him. Yeah. The two that uh, Kamala has announced is that she is going to put a Republican in her cabinet and that she's starting this uh, bipartisan council. Yeah, the advisory. I mean, Biden yeah, sure. said that he was going to have a female vice president and he was going to have a black woman on the Supreme Court. How, like, why is she already cucking out to Republicans before she needs to. Like, I would worry that the Supreme, if she, um, you know, if we need another justice, that she will, you know, compromise seriously. Well, I, I, agree. I, I agree. I agree. I agree that, well, I don't think yeah. she pardoned Trump. I do agree that she's cucking out a bit. Okay. And I would mm -hmm. encourage her to be far more extreme. That being said, right, like Biden said, he is a president for every American, not just for one party. Yeah. And it's probably important if you're in leadership that you keep an olive branch open for Republicans that want to become involved again in participating in the United States of America, that you have to keep that. It can't be, well, now we're only the Democratic Party. Fuck you guys. Even though that's what I would say they should say, because fuck them. <laughs> but it's probably important mm -hmm. for her to say, like, hey, listen, if you're a Republican, if you want to work with our administration, we want to do things like we should probably do it because Biden had that attitude. And Biden was incredibly yeah. and unbelievably successful as a president, unimaginably so. And he exceeded all even yes. when I'm hearing fucking Emma uh, Vingland or whatever, and Sam fucking Cedar saying shit like Biden did a lot better than we thought he would. Or like, I like that's yeah, he clearly knocked it out of the park. And nobody thought that the senile Parkinson's dude who you know stumbles across the stage could pass as much legislation bipartisan as he did. So I, I do think it's good that she does things like that. Like, hey, listen, I, it is going to be administration for everybody, even though I also I'm not completely you know cold on the idea of <laughs> you wanted a civil war. Let's you know, I'm just kidding, but <laughs> so yeah, I understand. <laughs> Yeah, so and um, I, I'll just say this. I'll just say this in yeah. concurrence. Um, as somebody who is an unapologetically partisan Democrat and was mm -hmm. before Stephen recently joined our ranks, uh, I totally <laughs> agree too that you know I would prefer, especially 
given that republic good faith requires reciprocity if if you mm -hmm. and i are having a conversation and i act in bad faith and you act in good faith by definition we had a bad faith conversation if it's not reciprocal it's just by definition bad faith republicans have been acting in bad faith and i'm not convinced that kamala harris will be able to succeed where president biden and president obama failed in trying to you know make the republican party a good faith loyal opposition party so i too would prefer mm -hmm. her to say hey listen i appreciate the endorsements hopefully we can align on some policy things but i intend to govern with a democratic agenda and make it abundantly clear uh, as a matter of fact hutch and i are going to be having a conversation with kyle kalinsky and crystal ball I think next week or something like that about this particular strategy i do think it's risky but what she is trying to do I think, yes, it's a, it's a civic level strategy in the sense that, you know, she wants to show that she's a bipartisan president. I also think she thinks mm -hmm. it's an electoral strategy as well, that she can peel away uh, a sufficient number of never Trumpers and that those on the left, those the, her leftward flank, um, will recognize when push comes to shove that Trump is still worse, even if they think Kamala is more moderate than they'd like her to be. And so you know, she's she's probably doing a cost benefit analysis here. Like, hey, listen, I, I can I can pull away from Trump without really risking my left flank. It is risky. But I will say there's actually some polling data to support that is working because her support among Republicans has went from five percent, uh, according to, I think, New York Times Siena poll last month. And now it's at nine percent. Mm -hmm. OK, and with election margins, these small, that could be a game changer. It is a risk. It is a huge risk, but it's based on at yeah. least sound logic. But I would totally agree. If she ends up governing as a centrist, I would be disappointed um, because I, I don't think that – I think we need – this is why I like Tim Walls. Tim Walls mm -hmm. understands power. He has – he's the governor of Minnesota, and Minnesota has a bicameral legislature, and in their Senate, the, the Democrats yeah. only have a one-seat majority. So if they lost mm -hmm. that seat, you know, the Republicans would be able to stymie everything that he does. And with that one-seat majority, he just like – pushes through he's like hey listen we'll come to the table and negotiate in good faith but at the end of the day i'm more powerful than you and i'm going to get my way more often than you and i think that that's how democrats should govern um mm -hmm. so i hope that she does but again even granting all that uh, you say that for how, how do you guys feel about this this council that she as, uh sorry well, council, I'm a count, no a council's <laughs> fine a council's fine as long as it doesn't necessarily you know reflect conservative policy i mean what she's saying is I will have I will hear advice from a bipartisan group. It's risky because in theory, it means that, you know, if she listens to that group uh, more often than I'd like, then she might govern in a centrist way. But it's she, we haven't gotten there yet. And even if she does, as bad as that is, even if she does, that's better than mm -hmm. a Republican. It's better than Trump. Mm -hmm. I guess so. I could see ways that uh, no, you I could, could prefer no, the way Trump not. does things. No. Yes, absolutely. I could. What could Trump do that you would prefer? <laughs> well, let's say on foreign policy, she has not given any details on Taiwan, on Ukraine, on Israel. Hold on. Right? That's we know not what wait, Trump's going to do. Wait, wait. First of all, that's not true for any of those two things. Okay, she said, for okay. instance, like we need a ceasefire in Israel. I'm pretty sure she said that we should be committed to Ukraine. Donald Trump is the one that says over and over again, I can't, t I can't say anything. I don't want to spoil. Yeah, yeah, but he will do something. Will he? I Wait, what? He, he didn't do. He didn't do anything for Ukraine. So what, I'm, what I'm saying is that she hasn't put any conditions or end date. For uh, Ukraine, she hasn't put any conditions on giving more weapons to Israel. She won't even say whether we'll send troops to Taiwan, and Biden has said that we would. Has Biden said Why we send troops not... to Taiwan? Wait, did Biden say that explicitly? I think he said that we would defend Those militarily. Those are two very different things. Taiwan. We defended, no, we defended I mean, Israel militarily, but we didn't send troops. troops there, right? No, no, I think he has said send people. <laughs> military. Wait, who sent what? Sorry, I was checking. Biden has out. said that we would defend with uh, with boots on the ground. We if would China invades Taiwan? Yes. So he he did. I I do recall him saying something to that effect, but then the State Department walked it back. Like, no, 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 no we're not making we're making that commitment. But again, that's Biden. You want Harris to mm -hmm. defend Taiwan with boots on the ground? Well, no, she was saying that at least I mean, Biden she's... gave a concrete answer. Gotcha. Well, some yeah, of I mean, she said we'd have the most, 
uh, lethal military in the world. So that why can't you say concrete. what we're going to do with it? Why would you? Well, but I mean, past a certain point, why would you say that? What, what would you want her to say? I just want her to have a position. That's me personally. I, I know that Trump is, you know, the only reason he gets things done with uh, foreign policy is because people don't know what he's going to do. Wait, I wait. Do you can I? Can I? Can I? Wait, wait, can I? I need to. I, wait, 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 wait. I want to. I'm trying okay. so hard. Okay. Tell me what I can do to please dispel this myth or illusion from your brain. <laughs> Trump did not get okay. anything done for foreign policy for the U.S. What do you think he got done? Um. Or where does this impression Let's come see. from? I'm not, I'm not trying to grill you. Like in 1974, in the in the Durham talks of the largest public, I'm not trying to like grill you. I'm just curious. Like, give me your general impression. Like, what do you feel like that. Donald Trump like accomplished foreign policy wise? I mean, he moved the uh, embassy to Jerusalem, which was insane, but he did it. Okay, wow. that is one thing he did do. Okay, but what else? <laughs> Wait, why would you? Why no, no, is no, that that's something. No, that's fine. No, no, that's fine. She said something. I'm uh, just curious. I just want to know where these impressions come from. What else? Uh, he cut funding to NATO. Well, I don't know or, if he did that. Or at least that. threatened to. But he did threaten to. Yeah, okay. And then what else? Um, didn't we withdraw from any agreement with Iran? Yep, yes. we did. Okay, cool. Yep. Okay, well, gotcha. That's to replace it. I understand what? there's nothing to replace it, but... Okay, that's fine. I, I would know. argue that two of three of these at the very least are bad, but okay, those are things that were done, though. Okay, I was just curious where the impression came from. Okay. I just find that not giving definitive answers, plus already saying that we'll have a Republican in the cabinet, a Republican on this weird committee that she's starting, it sounds very, um, like, Russian to have a committee of huh? advisors. No, um, wait a minute. No, 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 no. We you got, know what wait. I mean? Like, no, not at all. No, no, no. Presidents. I mean, that's what the cabinet is. That's, that's, that's a group of advisors. Presidents actually, there's a generic title, you know, white house advisor, senior advisor that they can just give mm -hmm. out like candy if they want to. You don't even have to be like secretary of X or, you know, director of Y. Also, um, yeah, I'd be careful. Cabinet would technically, are these called the pre oh they're called the president's advisor but the cabinet is really your it's the heads of all of your departments right but but i mean constitutionally well constitutionally mm -hmm. that's the whole genesis of it in theory all they are doing is ac exercising the pre president's delegated authority that that's the whole genesis sure. of it but but my point is that the president has a gazillion advisors in like very specific yeah. constitutionally mandated roles or, or roles dictated by federal statute and others in an informal way what's the problem with that that's not Russian. But wh why why announce this bipartisan council and promise there'll be uh, well, Republicans on it? Because, again, I think she's – well, for one reason Stephen provided and one for I, that I provided. Stephen mm -hmm. says you know, she's probably trying to signal to the American people that she's not going to be just a president for Democrats but a president for all Americans, including those who don't vote for her, number one. And number two, mm -hmm. perhaps even as a cynical electoral ploy saying, hey, listen, you never Trumpers – you, I'm not a communist. I actually, you will have a seat at the table, and I'm signaling mm -hmm. in that direction. So, and, and by the way, these reasons are not mutually exclusive. Um, mm -hmm. So, two good reasons why she might do that. And I, again, I grant you that there are risks associated with that, with which I am uncomfortable. But there's nothing. I understand. No, but that. I understand more of her, what her thing because all you just said, all that shit. She's just like, I don't give a fuck about that. Give me something like just like. She wants like the committee on deporting 50 Mexicans. Now, I'm not trying to say you're racist, but like something that's like, it's super concrete. It's very clear. It's punchy. It's like, you do this, you do that. And then boom, boom, boom. And like, that's like, like the, like the committee for like, give Marjorie $50 I, on my first day in office. I'm going to make a committee. We're going to put two people on it. We're going to find Marjorie. And we're going to give her 50 bucks. And that's like a boom. It's the thing that's done. That you can point to, um, I think that's, I think, I think that's like kind of what she's alluding to. Yeah. I just think, um, you know, you know, from like, elementary school that when you put a ton of people sort of like in charge, I know they won't be in charge, but when you take that many different opinions, you end up not really doing anything. But we don't even know how many people would be on it. It could, it could be that the number of advisors that Kamala Harris has would be fewer in number than the number of advisors that Biden has or that Trump has, because we, we there's not like an audit of what the, the Harris White House would look like, number one. And number two, mm -hmm. if your complaint is that she is too ambiguous on important issues for you, that's perfectly fair. It's a, it's a complaint that you're getting a lot or that she's getting a lot. But to say mm -hmm. that where I, ha where I have beef is like following it up, she should do what Trump does. Well, Trump 
flip flops on positions all the fucking time. Number one, number two, you've also said that, you know, many of the positions that Trump takes are just mere regurgitations of the last person to whom he spoke. And, and, and mm -hmm. it just like, I, I don't, I don't know. I just, that doesn't, I don't think that's comparatively, I, I would be, I would, I'm much happier with Kamala than Trump. I would much yeah. rather have her ambiguity than Donald Trump's uh, certitude, which then flips, you know, in five minutes when he talks to somebody else and some, or someone dangles car keys in front of his fucking face and he just paws at it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like what I'm saying is at least he makes decisions, even if they're shitty. Eventually he makes a decision. I just feel like the next four years will be stale. If the next four years are stale, it's because we have a Republican opposition in the Senate or the House or perhaps both, because that's the other important thing to those listening. It's not enough to just elect Vice President Harris. You've mm -hmm. got to, uh, you know, get the trifecta. You've got to get all of it. Otherwise, it will be. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I just think it's, it's so early and so unnecessary to uh, you were talking about DEI hires. So so uh, Tim Walls and then probably two other white dudes, right? Two other Republicans. Uh -huh. oh, my headphones dropped out. Mm. Sorry. I, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what uh, what you said there. Um, See so if you got anything else for for her. I mean, I, I just think it lacks courage. Why was Biden able to say he would add women and black women like as as some of his first actions and i haven't heard what she'll do in the first hundred days i've only heard her promise to compromise heavily um i i mean like the the, the truth is the the challenge is is you're uh, the truth is that it's challenging navigating in an arena where the other person is not playing by any set of rules. So any concrete position yeah. that she states is a position that Donald Trump is going to attack like crazy or the Republicans are going to attack like crazy. And then you also are wasting time like giving concrete positions when the other person is basically just rolling around in the mud saying insane, unhinged shit constantly. So it's difficult in that position to actually, you know, like illustrate anything like concretely. Like you can't actually get into anything concretely. Personally, I, I actually don't really have the best understanding of where we're going to be policy wise once Kamala is elected mm -hmm. uh, but like I I don't blame Kamala or Biden for that I, the reality is I would be upset if they were to get out and start talking policy a whole bunch because against conservative it's a waste of fucking time because they don't talk policy they don't care about policy and they don't vote on policy so for her to get up and just talk policy to who to the left that's it we're like we're it's not like we're doing a primary right now like we're past the primary it's time for the general so now you just have to be in in general election mode and Republicans and conservatives have decided that they don't vote on policy anymore in the United States they vote on whether mm -hmm. or not um, Olympic boxers have dicks or XY chromosomes Zones, and they vote on their perception of, um, you know, how many dogs and cats have been eaten this week by Haitians or whatever they're fake, or, or how many machines we have running right now, uh, creating hurricanes or whatever the fuck else they're obsessed with at this particular moment of time. Unfortunately. Yeah, I, I recognize that that uh, you can't run on policy and it wouldn't make sense for her right now when she's trying to appeal to the middle. But I don't know. I would like to hear her make some tough calls like i mean she has given some concrete like she said about like she wants to give a fifteen thousand dollar tax credit to first-time homebuyers she wants to expand the child tax credit she wants to give a fifty thousand dollar deduction for small businesses like these are concrete things yeah uh, personally those won't benefit me and i think the the small business loan is only if you generate profits your first year yeah, that one sounded so, kind mean, of retarded to me. I don't really know how that's supposed to work. But, you know, I'm just saying yeah. they're concrete no, things. I, I hold it, on, you're, being, no, you're being critical. Or hold on, you're being critical of a concrete <laughs> proposal. And before with Trump, you were just happy that he managed to flap his fucking gums and say something, okay, and put together a coherent, concrete thing at all. So, okay, listen, so we're like the same for Kamala, all right? Yeah, yeah. I know no one will ever do this, but I wish you would say I am also going to raise taxes and cut Social Security. And that is the way it has to be. I know that will never happen. I don't I think anybody had the courage to say I don't think I don't think we'll ever cut social security. I don't think that's ever gonna happen. <laughs> the third rail of politics, you do that and that's the end of your career. Um well listen, Jessica, uh, I appreciate yeah. the conversation. Um I Stephen, do you have is there anybody else you want to chat to or are you done? Because if you're done, then I think I'm pretty we'll end with her. unless some other person tweeted, did we call this person out? She said that we mentioned them. Or him, or and then maybe it's called the right girl. Uh, but this guy on uh, Twitter is saying that we called them out about the delaying of the certification of the vote, and that it has happened before. 
Um, I, but I, I didn't was... see this notification. Oh, it was a two. Oh. Okay. Well, fuck him. Okay. Sorry. Can, What's up? Can you hear me still? Yep. Mm. Or am I... Yeah. That's the last thing I will say. I am getting the feeling that she will concede on the first night, even if she shouldn't. Wait, that's what? how like, yeah. No, she's saying if she loses if, right. If Harris loses, you think Harris will concede the, to Trump the first night? I think she'll fold. No. Way too quickly. Yeah. Well, I don't. I don't think we will have a definitive answer about who <laughs> is going to win the first night at this point. And that's the other thing, Stephen. Like I'm thinking about your election night stream. Mm-hmm. I don't even know what that's going to look like. Are we going to like smash monsters and stay up for 72 hours? Like what is this even? Look we're like? going to go to sleep early because we're going to know by 9:30 after the final polls up closing. <laughs> it's going to be such a landslide win for Kamala. Man, and we're just going to be going to bed not... early that night. It's going to be so simple and so easy. And then I'm going to stand there while IRI calls you, and he's going to say, look, man, you were being so down on it. It was so obvious we were going to dominate the whole time. Yeah, I think I think I mean, I... we're going to have one point where the Republicans are up in the Electoral College vote, and there's going to be a Josiah-sized hole in the wall. You're going to have to scrape me <laughs> off the concrete. Nah. So. I mean, I, just if she is behind and uh, it looks bad, won't part of you kind of wish she was willing to do whatever it takes? No. To become president? Not even a little bit? I mean, the part, the same part of me there is the same part that's like looking for the best like Trigicon fucking, you know, site to put on my AR-15 <laughs> for when we go out and do the <laughs> Civil War. Like that's no, like at that point you're at like. Yeah, I, I so I, I don't even know. I don't know. I don't know. Apparently. Some Democrats, not the leadership, some um, are, you know, <laughs> they're, they are now also hedging about whether or not they're going to commit to certifying Trump's victory. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, not the leadership, not Hakeem Jeffries, not Chuck Schumer, anything like that. And Ouch. yeah, it, it, it'll be interesting um, because right now the Republicans are doing everything in their power to, yes, I will use the word rig. Uh, the election in their favor. Mm-hmm. They were trying to get, uh, they sent Lindsey Graham out to Nebraska, Stephen's home state, to uh, persuade his uh, his uh, uh, fellow Nebraskans to change the voting laws, how like votes are apportioned. To do winner take all. So that- yeah, to a winner take all. They waited until Maine was no longer in a position to respond uh, and do the same thing on their side against the Republicans. And that failed at least temporarily, but it's possible that, that the you know, they may change their minds on it. The shit that's going on with Georgia. As a matter of fact, the DOJ, I think, just sued Virginia. Uh, I think I read something today. I think it was Virginia for a voter roll purge 90 days before the election. And so may, they're going for broke, man. Um, and we didn't get a chance to talk about this, Stephen, in our thing earlier today. But uh, Musk is potentially, according to one source, uh, and I think a New York Times article, somebody who's familiar with the the uh, the books says that uh, Musk might be donating up to five hundred mil- million to the America Super PAC to try to um, boost Trump's uh, fundraising. Yeah, that's and, the Musk is the that's the richest guy in the world, right? Yeah, he's the one that's doing the Neuralink thing, right? To put the yeah. microchips in people's brains. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And he's the one who bought X, the publicly traded social media platform, and then turned it private with loan yeah. money help from Saudi Arabia, mm-hmm. right? Right. Okay, gotcha. And then he's the guy who also, was he on the Epstein flight logs or just in pictures with him? <laughs> I think just in pictures. I just can't in remember. pictures with him? Okay, yeah. gotcha. All right, crazy. Oh, oh, and, and remember, he wants, uh, he's a free speech absolutist, except when he's not. Mm-hmm. Um, gotcha. So he'll, he'll yank handles away from people in order to appropriate them for his super PACs. He'll ban people tracking his plane, which, I mean, again, he has every right to do, but it does contradict the free speech absolutist thing. Um and he's pulling as many strings as possible to uh, to land a sweet, cushy roll in uh, a second Trump administration. You may end up with a shadow president, Elon Musk. But I mean, Jesus. you can't say that because that would sound conspiratorial, right? It's not like the right would ever say anything like that about, you know, shadowy cabal or whatever. True. At least it wouldn't be Peter Thiel, who I would be way more scared of. Mm. Isn't he also donating a ton of money? Yeah, yeah, I hear Peter, Peter Thiel's the name is thrown around a lot, and he's like a weirdo. I say weirdo that lurks in the background. I actually don't know anything about him other than apparently he's a bad guy. My p- feelings about him are negative because I've read so much he's a bad guy, but I don't know yeah, anything he's about a, him. Yeah, <laughs> he used to be buddies with J.D. Vance. And fun fact, 
he founded a company called Palantir, which is named after the uh, evil crystal balls in uh, Lord of the Rings. Base. Also, is being friends with J.D. Vance in the past, is that even a bad thing? Uh, like, was, uh, has J.D. Vance been unhinged, point. like, historically, or is it just, like... A, because <laughs> listen, his tweets or his, uh, his text messages about Trump were pretty based. <laughs> they they were they were at one point. Um, so everything I've learned about JD Vance has been like within since he ran for Senate. Like I had no idea Hillbilly Elegy and all that shit. I've never read the book, never watched the movie. So he was like a cipher to me until he ran against. I think it was Tim Ryan in Ohio. Mm -hmm. But uh, Tourniquet says Palantir. Josiah never say it like that again. I apologize. Okay, all is right, it well, kind of crazy to imagine that like eight years ago? Paul Ryan was seen as like the new face of the new Republican Party, and now he's been right. replaced by like fucking the, like the likes of like Marjorie Taylor Greene and Jim Jordan, Mike Johnson, <laughs> Kevin McCarthy. Yeah, like in the oh fact that that God. he's a rhino, he's a rhino. It's so it's so sad, it's so depressing. It really is. It really is. So I'm out. I appreciate okay. it. Um, listen, this was really fun. We should do this again sometime. Yeah, I'll be here. I love you. Be All careful, right. babe. I right, love you too, buddy. Bye. I hate that fucking guy. Fuck Josiah and fuck Pisco, okay? Oh, the right person showed up. Oh, shit. How do I... I gotta make him a speaker? I don't know how to do this shit. Oh, my God. The right, Wait, did you request it? Why is bail good according to you? My understanding is that bail allows you to, um, I don't know, I think you might have to wait for your arraignment, but between your um, arraignment and your trial or whatever, basically it's like, hey, listen, I am going to go to court and I will stand trial for my crimes and I'll answer and all this, but like while we're in the process of figuring out the trial stuff, like I need to carry on with my life. Like I need to work, I need to do things. Like I understand I broke the law, I was arrested for a thing that was bad and I'm being charged with a bad thing, but I'm not like a flight risk. I'm not so destructive that I'm gonna be like fleeing the state. So like allow me to carry on with my life instead of completely destroying me for months while I prepare my criminal defense, right? I think that's fine. I think that the concept of bail is, is totally fine. The concept is fine. Now, obviously, you know, there might be bad utilizations of it if some guy you know killed a bunch of kids and you're like oh sure let him post bail and then he runs out and kills more kids it's horrible but i think that the concept of bail is totally fine but the problem is the only time you guys ever hear about bail is in movies when people post bail <laughs> and then the villain yeah flees to another country it's like ah oh, fuck fucking bail Um, what if you don't have money? Um, I've heard people make the argument that cash bail is a shitty system or the idea that tying it to money might not be fair. I know you can go to, are bails bondsmen? Are those the people that give you a loan for it? I mean, like that's shitty. I mean, I agree with that. I also think that, um, I think that, um, Fines, I think, are shitty when they don't scale with income. I think that's kind of shitty, but. Um, I'm waiting for this the right stuff person or somebody said they wanted to fight on Twitter and I saw them in here as a speaker um, But I don't think that or I saw them in here as a listener But I don't know if they requested speakership, but they might be busy also so I might just say we might just kill the the talker the talker space They said I'll be done in 45 minutes at the most oh right fuck that um Okay, yeah, fuck this. Okay, listen, I love you guys all in the space. Be careful, don't die. Don't participate on X. Don't post on this dog shit fucking platform, okay? 
we will mass exodus after the election. Leave, fucking leave, leave, leave this place. Leave it. You can do it. Be careful. Okay, I need to do a quick video. Okay, about to record it. Can you cut it from stream or clip it? Smiley face. Uh, telling people to go sign up for Nevada. 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 Wow, they even made me a script. Okay. Take. Take one. Take. Take one. Next morning, yeah, I hate Trump. TBC? Oh, to be clear. Thank you. Okay. Quiet on set. Hey, guys. What is up? We've got an exciting final opportunity before the election, exclamation mark. Many of you showed up to Ohio or Milwaukee for canvassing events, and we have one last push, exclamation mark. Progressive Victory is teaming up with some awesome organizations to host a canvassing event in Las Vegas on October 26th and 27th, and we need your help. With so much on the line this election, from the presidency, Senate seats, abortion rights, now's the time to step up. If you're free and want to make a real impact, come down to Vegas with us and get involved. If you want to join me in Vegas, sign up at progressive.win slash Vegas. I'll be down there for Sunday because I think I'll be coming back from my event in, um, I'm doing two shows in California. Uh, I linked it in all three of my chats. Or if you're listening, it's progress.win slash Philly. No, progress.win slash Vegas, sorry. PV, Progressive Victory, also has a Pennsylvania event partnership where we are joining up with others on the ground organizations or other on the ground organizations the weekend of the election. You can join at progress.win slash Philly. Um, if you want to do like the Pennsylvania thing, that's in conjunction with the Democratic Party and stuff. Here you go. Have at that. I don't think I'll be able to make um, that one. But as a community, I just want to raise money to help fund volunteers who need assistance getting there. We don't need much, but every dollar raised will go directly towards housing volunteers and getting doors knocked. Let's turn Sin City into Win City and make sure our voices are heard this election. Or alternative text, oops. Let's make it so your mom isn't the only thing getting blown out this election season. Good one, good script. Cut, okay. Okay, I'm so glad whoever linked this. Protecting speech from government. Okay, I'm glad to have this like concretely. All right. So Twitter did take the, um, Twitter reversed its course on the laptop story in less than 24 hours. It was less than 24 hours. <laughs> And Facebook was within a week. I don't think also, I think Facebook like deprioritized it or they, not deprioritized. I think they de-boosted um, it, but I don't think, um, I don't think Facebook ever fully banned the link, right? Oh, sorry. I was looking at this. I did see this. The Trump campaign worked with Musk's ex to keep leaked JD Vance file off the platform. I don't even want to read it though, because I'm going to lose my fucking mind if I get into this shit. <laughs> I am so black the fuck pilled on um, everything that has to do with this election. Holy shit. <sighs> My 
By the way, Kamala's fifty thousand dollar deduction for new business rolls over until they first earn a profit. Yeah, sure. I just I don't know if that would matter that much. If you're a small business, a new business, and you're earning a profit, like you're probably already doing really. You're probably in like the top one percent of <laughs> uh, businesses anyway. Are you going to Vegas for sure? Almost positively to the. Um, huh. <coughs> Wait, did I already book my fucking tickets? Wait, when does it say Vegas is, um, oh, it's probably on the 20, oh, on the 26th, oh, on Saturday. I, I should be there on Saturday, yeah, I'm pretty sure I will be. What is the I feel like I got so mind fucked. I, I don't know what is happening. I feel like I'm um What I felt like for a long time that the liberal media had fucked up on a lot of things. And that I understood by people but like losing trust. But now as I like think about more and more things, I don't know if that was ever true or if I was still getting yanked around somehow by um like the conservative ethereal tendrils. Estimated day for J6 video. Um hopefully within a couple weeks. It's all it's all being worked on now, so now it's 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 going. I need to make I just need to have people sit through it all. It was funny reading through the um I hope yeah, he's got to figure it out. I hope the the guy that I have editing it works for a really large channel and he's seen some of my stuff, so he's like pretty aware and he kind of agrees with me broadly. And he says that it's like, yeah, it seemed like a big deal. It seemed really bad. So like, I'll help you with this. And then as we're going through the whole script read, we're going through thing after thing after thing. And I can tell that like some, some sections feel a little bit dry because there's a lot of stuff. Um, and then the, um, that fake electors thing is really wild. Because I, as I, anytime I'm trying to read, like we, the United States, because I try to, initially I was going to introduce everything sequentially where I'm like, in the United States, you don't actually elect your president. Um, you only vote for a batch of electors and you don't even really do that. It depends on how the state legislature, blah, blah, blah. There's like a whole bunch of shit. Um, and I say all this and like boring, it's whatever. And then when the fake electors thing rolls around, then it's like, wait a second, hold on. These guys are fake. Wait, these certificates aren't real. Wait, who is this? Wait, why did these people even matter? But then I have to like go back and like, oh yeah, this is why I said this and this and this and this. There's got to be a way to punch. Um... There's got to be a way to figure it out, but who knows? They'll figure it out. Can't some states vote already? Uh, are we giving up on early voters? Oh, true, actually. Some states can't. Never mind. I'll just cancel the whole thing. My bad. You're right on that. My bad. Fuck me. I'll tell them to fuck off. <laughs> Thank you for telling me that. Never mind. Stop. It's all good. Thanks, though. Thank you. We'll be voicing it. Uh, I don't know where we settled on that. Initially, I was narrating quite a bit, and then the idea was to narrate less. Um, I thought about, like, hopping up to D.C. Uh, for a day and narrating some in front of, like, the Capitol and shit, because that would be uh, obviously more dramatic. Although, I think the editor coming in thought that it was going to be a bunch of claims and then we'd have to spend a lot of time like finding video and putting video together. But I'd already gotten, I think I had around three hours of video footage across like probably like a hundred links that was, or 200, I don't know. That was already like compiled of like timestamps and everything. It's like, well, there's so much footage. We might be able to tell the entire story just through footage alone, which is kind of what I wanted to do in the first place. So that might be fine. I don't know. We'll see. Who knows? Who knows? Who's the editor? Lemino or some shit? I don't know who it is. Some guy. Actually, his name is Ethan, um, and he says he works at, he can't disclose the company, but apparently they did some big defamation lawsuit a long time ago. But for some reason, he's like unavailable this weekend. I don't know why. He said there's a holiday or something.
You guys are retarded. It's none of those people. Okay. Um, 